Ever wondered how long it would take 10,000 mealworms to devour an apple? Or how to make a PB&J in space? Maybe you want to know what causes a railroad tank car to do this. If you're a curious cat who wants all the answers, just kick back and relax as we take a tour of all things weird, wonderful, and downright amazing in this episode of Things You Will See For The First Time In Your Life. Some of the first sounds we learn as kids are animal noises. Cows go moo, dogs go woof, and cats go meow. Well, most cats. This is Jack. Whoa. Oh. This black and white moggy is like the Morgan Freeman of cats. According to his owner, the velvet tones of Jack the cat are the result of a condition known as laryngeal paralysis. This rare disorder occurs when the cartilages of the larynx do not open and close normally during respiration. Jack's owner says that he has been emitting these almighty meows ever since his first surgery, and that's when he knew he had to share them with the world. You say hi? No. Good boy. I don't know about saying hi. The sounds coming out of this moggy sound more like a suck dude to me. But some people aren't so convinced. According to zoologists, a strangely human-like meow isn't a common symptom of laryngeal paralysis. In fact, cats suffering from the condition usually sound squeaky rather than comically deep. Then again, Jack's changing voice could be a totally unique case. What do you make of this manly moggy? You know, I think Jack is actually trying to communicate something. I ran his meows through a translator, and he seems to be saying that you should totally hit those like and subscribe buttons and tickle that little bell icon. Unless you want to square up to this burly kitty, I guess you should listen to him. Hey, I don't make the rules. Who doesn't love a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich? This winning combo is one of the easiest snacks to whip up anytime, anywhere. But what about when you're floating up in space? Cooking anything in zero gravity presents a challenge because crumbs or condiments could drift away and damage or clog equipment. And don't even get me started on utensils. But NASA's Expedition 50 commander Shane Kimbrough is here to show us that astronauts do eat more than just powdered astronaut food. So the first thing we need for our sandwich is a piece of bread. Well, up here we don't have bread like you do on Earth, but we have tortillas. So we use tortillas a lot for uh, sandwiches, so that's what I'm gonna use for my peanut butter and jelly. I'm gonna stick that down to some tape here so it doesn't go floating away while I'm getting everything else ready. It might take a bit of juggling, but Kimbrow uses handy strips of Velcro and tape to stick down any items he's not using so that they don't fly away. He does cheat a little by using a tortilla instead of bread, because anything capable of producing a lot of crumbs is a no-no in space. But frankly, chasing two floating slices of bread around sounds like more hassle than it's worth anyway. I'll spread the peanut butter on my sandwich, into the tortilla, and then I'll get my jelly ready. See, a lot of things you gotta think about and manage while you're while you're eating up here. Then you just spread the jelly on the sandwich. So there's my peanut butter and jelly tortilla or sandwich. From up here, I'll just kind of close it up and enjoy. Next time you put something down and it doesn't immediately float away from you, just think about what you're taking for granted. Let's play a quick game of guess what this is. A nice loaf of freshly baked rye bread, maybe? Not quite. This forbidden loaf of bread is actually someone's hair. And if you were wondering what it looked like before it was sliced into like a Christmas ham, here's the same hair loaf in all its former glory. You're probably wondering how someone's hair can become such a matted mess. Although there's no word on who this woman is or her exact circumstances, 
There is a rare condition known as Plica polonica, or Polish play, that could have caused this candy floss-like hairdo. This can occur when the hair shaft's protective outer layer, called the cuticle, becomes damaged, exposing a moist, sticky cortex which sticks to other similarly affected hairs. Over time, the hair becomes an irreversibly matted, moist, and stiff mass of hair. The condition was quite common among the peasantry in Europe during past centuries when hair grooming was largely neglected. Thankfully, it's not so common now. But let this matted loaf be a reminder that hair care is important, kids. Have you seen anything online worthy of sharing? If so, get in touch at clipsatbeamazed.com. You'll not only earn yourself a cheeky shout-out if your clip gets featured in a future video, but we might even buy it if we like it enough. Now let's get back to it. What's the coldest your house has ever been? There are plenty of telltale signs that you might want to turn the heating on, like when you start to see your own breath. But what about when this happens? I think we can all agree that this isn't normal, right? In fact, this is a particularly worrisome after-effect of a statewide power outage in Texas amid a rare blast of snowstorm in February 2021. As temperatures unexpectedly plunged below freezing, higher demand for electricity caused the power grid to repeatedly fail, leaving over 4 million Texans without power. Temperatures haven't been so low in Texas in decades, and this jaw-dropping video showing massive icicles dangling from one Austin resident Clifton Highfield ceiling fan are enough to prove that this is some serious business. It's unclear if the ceiling fan was outdoors in the bad weather or if the pipes in Highfield's house burst, causing the resulting water to freeze. Either way, this is some seriously chilling stuff. Do creepy crawlies freak you out? If so, you might want to look away now. That writhing mass is over 10,000 mealworms devouring a chunk of lettuce. This incredible time-lapse was created by Green Time Lapse on YouTube. It may seem like the wriggling insects made that lettuce disappear in no time, but it actually took a total of 18 hours, and their feasting doesn't stop there. How long do you think it'd take them to chomp their way through this crunchy green apple? In 10 hours, they've barely made a dent in the fruit. Let's flash forward a little. By the 30-hour mark, the apple is part submerged in its wormy grave, but it takes a grand total of 46 hours for it to be swallowed up completely. Mealworms, which are not actually worms but the larval stage of mealworm beetles, don't have actual teeth, but they do have jaw-like mouthparts called mandibles, which they use to bite, cut, and digest food. No one loves a good meal more than a mealworm. You've seen explosions in action films aplenty, but explosions have a really cool sibling you may not have seen before. Implosions. You probably think it'd take the force of an invisible giant to crush this railroad tank car like it's a can of coke, but it's actually easier than it looks. It all has to do with pressure. Normally, the air pressure inside the tank and in the atmosphere on the outside are about the same, but if you remove the air from inside the tank, the balance is lost. Now there's pressure pushing in on the tank, but nothing pushing out, which makes it susceptible to collapse. It would be up to the structural integrity of the tank walls to prevent this from happening, but you'd need something much thicker than this tank car with stronger walls, like a submarine, to hold off all that atmospheric pressure. We're talking pressure equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. Let's see that again from a different angle. But how do you get all the air out of a train tanker? Well, this tank car imploded after the vacuum safety valves were disabled. These devices direct the flow of air or fluid to create a stable vacuum inside the tank. But once they're disabled, all the air is sucked out, allowing the atmospheric pressure to squash it in an instant. Who knew the air around us was so jacked? 
there's nothing like a nice relaxing bath after a hot day. But this Madagascan hedgehog Tenrek is taking a bath of a very different kind. It may look like this spiky little fella is just rolling around in a dish of sand, but there's a method behind his madness. This dust bath is actually a behavior known as scent anointing. By covering himself with a frothy saliva stimulant mixture, this little critter is able to mask his own odor with a foreign substance, providing some protection against predators in the wild. This natural behavior could also serve as a grooming purpose by conditioning the skin and spines and maybe even killing parasites. Doesn't it look like he's having fun? Have any of you climbed to the top of a mountain before? Besides the breathtaking views and high altitude, there's another thing you might expect to find at the summit. Static electricity. These guys experienced that firsthand atop the Aktau Mountains in Kazakhstan. But having their hair stand on end like mad scientists isn't the only static side effect. <laughs> Do you hear that bizarre fizzing sound? That's static electricity, baby. Although it might make you feel like you're one of the X-Men, there's a dangerous side to all this mountaintop fun. This type of high electrical charge in the atmosphere can actually be a final warning before a lightning strike. Occasionally, though, it can also be a sign of a less dangerous phenomenon called a static storm. In this case, there are no lightning flashes, but the presence of electricity is manifested by crackling sounds in the air and one's hair involuntarily standing on end. Most of the time, this static electricity is not dangerous, unless an approaching storm indicates that genuine lightning may follow, in which case it's best to get away as quickly as possible. That means ditching any metal poles or objects, creating space between yourself and others, and avoiding any solitary trees. The thing is, it can be hard to tell the difference between a static storm and a real one, so these guys were taking their chances. Plants are mostly pretty harmless, but there's one plant that can certainly make life less than comfortable if you mess with it. The Jumping Chala. As you can see, this type of cactus from the genus Cylindropuntia is capable of causing a whole world of pain. This deceptively fluffy-looking cactus's habitat ranges from the southern USA to Mexico, South America, and some Caribbean islands. It gets the nickname Jumping Chala because of the way it seems to literally jump onto anyone unfortunate enough to brush past it. The many segments of the cactus just separate extremely easily, which means people often don't realize they've been attacked and wrongly conclude that the plant must have jumped instead. Once the one-inch long spines have stuck in your skin, it's best to try and use a tool to remove them rather than your hands, like the woman in this clip, because their barbs can become further embedded or even stick to your fingers instead. Luckily, this particular victim, who goes by the name Classy Flowers on YouTube, managed to free herself from the plant's spiky clutches. Anyone else think Crocs probably aren't the most appropriate footwear for a desert hike? What came first, the chicken or the egg? We may never know for certain, but in 2018, Chinese students made history by hatching a live chicken outside the egg. The science behind this shell-less hatching is surprisingly simple. An egg will be hatched with or without its shell if the right conditions are met, but such conditions can be hard to achieve. As explained by Li Zandong, a biology professor at China Agricultural University, the shell acts as the egg's shield against fungus while providing additional calcium for the baby chicken. Hatching a chicken outside the shell is almost like saving a human baby after a premature birth. It requires the perfect conditions and a lot of careful monitoring. First, the contents of the egg are emptied into a plastic pouch filled with calcium and distilled water designed to create an environment similar to that of inside the egg. The pouch is then placed into a cup, sealed, and put into an incubator under close observation for around 21 days. 
Within two days, the heart begins to form, followed by blood vessels, eyes, and the elantuous sac which helps with waste disposal. The chick continues to take shape until feathers and feet begin to form around the end of the second week. Eventually, around the 20-day mark, the fully formed chick needs more oxygen and punctures the allantois membrane with its beak. Finally, the chick wakes up inside the cup and is ready to enter the big wide world. He's probably thinking, how on earth did I get in here? Why did the family of swans cross the road? Oh, sorry, were you expecting a punchline? Nothing to see here, apart from a family of law-abiding swans using the pedestrian crossing to cross this street in the town of Maryborough in Victoria, Australia. The birds seem to know exactly what those big white stripes mean as they make their way across, although they do require a little nudge from some nearby bystanders to make it safely to the other side. According to local residents, this swan mom, dad, and four fluffy cygnets have become a regular sight around town as they make their way to the nearby lake. These swans are better citizens than some of the people in my hometown. Do you suffer from arachnophobia? If your answer is a resounding yes, then running through this field is probably your idea of hell on earth. Although it may look like a thin veil of shiny fabric on first glance, this soccer field in Papamoa, New Zealand is actually smothered in cobwebs. This otherworldly phenomenon was spotted by Todongo resident Tracy Maris in 2017, around the same time that New Zealand was hit by Cyclone Cook. According to spider experts, ribbons of multiple cobwebs can occur when spiders seek out higher ground following flooding in the area. This behavior is known as ballooning, and it can help smaller spiders get around easier. They just point their butts in the air and release a line of silk which the wind picks up, carrying them and the silk like a little spider parachute. Man, getting around would be so much easier if humans could do the same. Here's a question you probably never thought to ask before. Can chickens swim? Let's find out, shall we? Really? That is too funny. Oh, no, that didn't work. For a moment there, it seemed like this unsuspecting chicken didn't even know the answer. After being plonked in the pool, it floats for a few seconds before jumping straight back out again. You see, chickens aren't built for swimming like ducks are. They don't have webbed feet, they don't secrete waterproof oil to coat their feathers with, and they lack the ability to right themselves in the water. So they may not be proficient swimmers, but that doesn't mean chickens immediately sink like a stone either. Their innate ability to float stops them from drowning for just long enough to get out of the water. You really do learn something new every day. There are plenty of strange natural phenomena in the world, but I bet you've never heard of slushy waves before. You're probably thinking that the sea in this clip filmed at Cape Cod, Massachusetts in 2015 looks a bit milky. Well, that's because it's basically frozen. Seawater freezes at around 28.4 degrees Fahrenheit compared to freshwater, which freezes at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit because of its salt content. But as seawater begins to freeze and needle-like ice crystals known as frazzle form in the water, the salt does not freeze and separates from the water and ice. Because the ocean is in constant motion, these ice crystals begin to collide and meld together, creating a slushy appearance that will only become ice chunks or sheets if temperatures remain frigid for long enough. This strange, slurpy-like mixture freezes instantly as it hits the shore, giving the beach an otherworldly feel. It may look strangely appealing, but I don't recommend making a bargain slurpy from partly frozen seawater, unless salt is your favorite flavor. If you're a true fan of this series, you'll probably remember Sussoft, the ultimate airsoft pro. And if you don't know already, you better get to know.
For a quick recap, airsoft is a competitive team shooting sport that's a bit like paintball but with plastic projectiles that hurt less when you get hit. Airsoft weapons, like the Lakapa Customs pistols used by Sussoft, may be true scale replicas of real world firearms, but they use small plastic balls around 6 mm in diameter that are fired with around 1 joule of energy. That's less than most other team shooting games. When you do get hit, it's up to you to tag yourself out of the game. <laughs> Sussoft has been playing at Airsoft Miami for almost three years now, and he's developed some serious skills. Just take a look at this super smooth slide followed by an almighty fine sweep. If any of you have played Call of Duty before, you're probably thinking that this adrenaline-inducing sport looks a lot like a video game come to life. Airsoft arenas offer all sorts of different realistic environments, from military skirmishes to historical reenactments. And with innovative scenarios and strategy at play, no two games are ever the same. But no matter what's around the corner, Sussoft uses his skill and agility to sweep the competition. <laughs> Whether you think the zombie apocalypse is only a matter of time away, or you just want to feel that good old COD nostalgia, maybe Airsoft is the new sport for you. Which of these things amazed you the most? If you're in a binge-watching kind of mood, why not check out one of the previous episodes in this series next? Don't forget to send some awesome content of your own to clips at beamazed.com, and thanks for watching, guys!